guys, Dr. Christy Ennis. If you've got hip bursitis like I did, then you know the agony of that dramatic reenactment. And I'm going to show you the steps that I took to get myself out of it, starting right in bed. Now that you're no longer smooshing that area, we're going to work on some self-massage. And you have multiple muscles in the hip that actually attach right where that yucky pain is around that greater trochanter. So what we are going to do is gently massage those because a lot of times these muscles right here get nice and tight and then push and compress right onto those bursa, right, which are those nice little fluid-filled sacs that attach or surround that bursa. So notice, I'm just doing some really gentle pressure on some specific muscles, which I'll show you, but you don't need to worry about that. Really know, you know that your pain is here, so we're just going right around that area, and it'll probably feel pretty darn tight to you. I actually happen to keep a derma edge right on my nightstand for areas and issues just like this, because I got a lot of them. So I tend to use this, but you can use your hand if you need to. So again, kind of the side of the hip, the front of the hip, and then we're going into the back of that hip a little bit too, even into those bunsies. And you're just doing it until it feels like a little bit less tension there. If you're anything like me, you're gonna to wanna to actually go back to sleep. So now that you're hopefully a little bit more comfortable, we're gonna talk about some positions. So we already know we don't wanna lie on that side. Usually the back's pretty good, but if you go and roll on the other side, <clears throat> you actually wanna make sure you have a little pillow because if you don't, my leg is like this, and now I'm actually stretching one of those muscles that's pretty not happy about it and actually puts pressure back on that area again. So to prevent that leg from kind of dropping down, if you take a lovely little pillow, put it right in between your knees, right? Now my leg is doing this instead of dropping down. So I'm gonna wake up now and we're gonna go right into that seated position. Another one that I see people do very often, think about that same thing, it's crossing their leg. So now you're going back into what we call that adduction. And this is again, kind of pulling and gonna push pressure right through there. So you wanna sit with those legs uncrossed with lovely posture. And then lastly, from a standing standpoint, if you need to, a lot of times standing actually does cause discomfort. So you wanna make sure you're not doing the sassy hip thing, right, by sticking your hip out and putting weight all on one side, because it's common for us to just kind of hang there. If it's really bad, and I have had some patients need to use a cane just temporarily so they take some pressure, and you would use that cane in the side opposite of the pain. So if it's my left side, I would use that cane in my right hand. Besides this lovely, ah, good morning stretch, you actually do not, let me repeat that, <laughs> do not want to stretch that hip. It probably feels tight, but just like I showed you with crossing your legs, if you go into that traditional kind of figure four stretch or whoop, I'm gonna switch it around, right? This is the common one or this other one where you're going over like this. That's exactly the position I just told you that will put more stress right into that area. So please, while this is irritated, don't stretch. Once you've loosened those muscles up a little bit and you're avoiding those things that really cause it pain, we do wanna work on some strength. And I'm still in bed, so we're gonna do our first strengthening exercise lying down. So, another common cause, whew, my bed is getting dirty, another common cause of that pain is actually weakness in some of those muscles too. So I'm gonna start off by doing a bridge, which, to do this one properly, you're gonna do a little bit of a pelvic tuck Keep your hands pressed down by your side and then squeeze into those buns as you lift up. Now, this is working those glute muscles. It's also working some of those lateral hip muscles a little to help stabilize us, but in a little bit more of a gentle way instead of just isolating them, which as we're really sore in the beginning, it's much more comfortable to do exercises like this. Now, if this one feels okay, you can go right from here so we're gonna lift it on up again, and then you can add a little pull apart with those knees, keeping those hips up. So we're getting a little bit more into those outside hip muscles. So if this one is too painful to start, you just start with that bridge. This would be kind of the little next progression here, and you wanna shoot for about 15 to 20. Exercise two is a wall slide. So standing with your back against the wall, you're literally sliding down that wall. Now, just be aware that it can take some time before you're able to get to even this point. It took me a good week before I was able to do any real standing exercises. 
So we're using some of those big leg muscles, not as much of these side muscles, but those are engaging a little bit because they're helping to stabilize us. So bridge first, followed by this wall slide again, about 15 to 20 reps if you can. Progressing to now actually work in these muscles a little bit more, we are going to step it to the side. So literally, it's just this. But what you want to be careful of is that you're not doing what I call the penguin or, I don't know, some weird random dance, maybe the Elaine, right, sort of. So keeping those hips forward, those feet forward, and taking nice big steps that you lean a little, or excuse me, I should say, no, 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 don't lean, that you shift a little, but don't lean. And if you wanna make this a little bit harder, you can go ahead and put a band around the legs to add a little bit of extra resistance. Next exercise in this set, we are gonna use a band. Standing so that you have a little bit of support, shifting your weight onto one side, not leaning. And we're gonna take this leg that's hurting us, or hopefully not hurting so much anymore, and we're bringing it out to the side. Again, remember, if this does hurt, you don't wanna do it yet. Go back to those other steps. So keeping that foot forward, I've got my leg behind just a touch, so I'm really activating right in here. Now you can do this on the other leg too, but just know that if you're putting all your weight on that side, this side is working as well as this one, but this sometimes can be a little bit painful right in the beginning, so this is a little bit more of a progression to actually do standing on this leg and moving the one that doesn't cause discomfort. Our last tier of exercises are actually going to be side lying. So when you, this is my right injured one, or not anymore, but the one that was, I am going to roll forward onto this hip when I look down, I should see my feet and probably not much of my legs. So if you see a lot of your leg, your legs are too far forward. You can keep the bottom leg bent or straight, whichever is more comfortable. I'm gonna bend mine. You're gonna rotate this top foot down to really activate these side hip muscles. Bring this leg back just a touch so I'm aiming towards the heel. And then it's touching down on the ground and then lifting a little beyond parallels, okay? But you don't wanna to lift too high. You tend to use some of those hip flexor muscles. So around, again, that 15 to 20 reps. If you wanna do this on the other side, you absolutely can, because odds are you may have some weakness on that side too. Just watch, because remember, when we first started this video, how painful it was lying on that side. So you really just wanna make sure that there's no pain lying on that side if you do the other side. Exercise two, keep those knees bent now, but don't move your hips. We're actually gonna come propped up onto our forearm. I'm gonna lift up into that side plank and then that top knee is going to lift as well. So it's lift and lift. Again, this one's probably a little bit harder so you may wanna do a few less repetitions and same concept about doing it on that other side as well. Here's a bonus advanced one for you guys. So really things need to be feeling pretty good. So we're gonna start off with a regular side plank. Now we're actually using all of this muscle down on the bottom as it is, so that's tough enough. But to make it even harder, we're lifting that top leg. So this leg is working and all of this stuff down there has to work even harder. So you can dip it back down. Ooh, there was a little snap, crackle, pop there, and it's a lift again. If you are looking for other ways to get those muscles activated, I'm gonna link a video, woohoo, link a video for you guys. So clearly, right, you wanna make sure that you're staying nice and balanced here too. You may only be able to start with a few repetitions and that's totally okay. 